Good morning, everyone. Hope you all had a good uh, insurrection day, as, I, as I'd like to call it. <laughs> yeah, Happy 4th of July or post 4th of July, and thank you all for being here. Um, I want to talk to you all about some pretty serious stuff today, actually, and I'll give my immediate take just on some of this. Basically, right now, uh, there are rumors, and including from Volodymyr Zelensky himself, claiming that Russia is planning to destroy one of the main nuclear, rea uh, nuclear power plants in Ukraine. Zelensky is claiming that Russia has planted explosives on it, getting ready to, to, to destroy it, which would create like a Chernobyl situation, uh, which would be similar to a dirty bomb. It would be akin to a nuclear attack uh, in Ukraine. Russia, meanwhile, is claiming Ukraine is doing it, and they're saying that Ukraine is trying to drag us all into World War III. Uh, I'll give my immediate take on this, just because I know you know, nuclear war is no joke, and I know a lot of you take this very seriously. Well, I say you should. Uh, I do not think this is going to cause World War III. I, I want to be straightforward with this. I do think that if they detonate it, you probably have an investigation, a trial, and things along these lines. And through that investigation and trial, it's going to be very hard to find out who done it. It's going to be hard to prove guilt. Uh, this will likely have a big impact on the war in Ukraine, though, because they'll have to they'll have to stay away. I don't know how large the area would be that will be contaminated, but it will make a large tract of the area um, where the, you cannot enter it. And you would probably have to have some kind of cleanup crew or emergency response team. If the destruction is large enough, it could, it could actually impact a lot of uh, Europe as well uh, as that, again, spreads. Remember, if we go back to what happened in Chernobyl, the the heroes the people framed as heroes who went into the chernobyl power plant this was in ukraine as well during the soviet union went into the chernobyl power plant to shut it off uh to, to uh, kill themselves essentially uh did so in order to save most of europe had they not done that you would have had a nuclear meltdown and the nuclear destruction would have uh, really made a lot of Europe, at least in that region, uninhabitable for a long time. And so it is possible Russia may do this. It's possible Ukraine may do this in Ukraine. Um, it's not clear who's going to be the one behind it, and I doubt there's going to be immediate reaction. Point is, this will very likely have a big impact if they do, in fact, do this. Uh, but I think the public support for Ukraine is not there to drag us into World War III. And I think the plausible deniability already in place is strong enough that you would have to have an investigation afterwards, if, they, if any side did this, uh, that it would make mutually assured destruction impossible. I want to be clear about that up front because I know those are some of the main concerns. That said, let me show you what's happening. Uh, I'll show you the direct statement from Volodymyr Zelensky. This is on Twitter. He posted a video, but I'll read his statement first. Volodymyr Zelensky said this, again, Ukrainian leader. He says, Now we have information from our intelligence that the Russian military has placed objects resembling explosives on the roof of several power units of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, perhaps to simulate an attack on the plant. Perhaps they have some other scenario, but in any case, the world sees, can't but see that the only source of danger to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is Russia and no one else. Unfortunately, there was no timely and large-scale response to the terrorist attack on the uh, Kekova hydroelectric power plant, which one of them destroyed. It's not clear which. And that, um, that, that's important. I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment, a moment. And he says, And this may incite the Kremlin to commit new evil. It is the responsibility of everyone in the world to stop it. No one can stand aside as radiation affects everyone. I'll play the video, but let me tell you one point first because I want to analyze this. Ukraine is in a boy who cried wolf state right now. Um, I would be apt to believe them that Russia would do this, but it's, it's apt to believe the boy who cried wolf who's saying wolf, wolf, and you respond and it turns out you know, he's laughing in your face because there's no wolf there. The problem with that is that once the wolf does come, it's hard to, it's hard to believe them, frankly. Uh, they said the same thing about the destruction of the Nord Stream pipelines, where they were claiming Russia destroyed the Nord Stream pipeline. Russia, based on current evidence, does not appear to have destroyed the Nord Stream pipeline. It was either the United States or Ukraine. Uh, and so that story has fallen through. 
the hydroelectric power plant he's talking about. It's possible Russia destroyed it, but people also suspect Ukraine destroyed it. Both sides are blaming the other, and there's no clear information on who did it uh, yet. Uh, meaning there's enough plausible deniability where either side could destroy something like this, and either side could blame the other side. And nobody's going to believe him either way, because it's, again, a boy who cried wolf scenario. Zelensky's statements are very strange, and I'll tell you why. He's saying that Russia has, ex has pl placed explosives on the power units of the plant in order to simulate an attack on the plant. Russia claims that Ukraine is planning to attack the plant, meaning it would appear to be an outside attack. And Ukraine is claiming that Russia is doing it in such a way to make it appear that Ukraine destroyed the plant. Are you getting this? And so they're claiming that Russia is planning to destroy it and to make it look like Ukraine did it. And Ukraine says that Russia is planning to destroy it and making it look like Ukraine did it. Sorry, Russia, Russia is planning to, they're, what they're saying is that Ukraine is planning to destroy it. And so it's, it depends on who you believe in this case. Zelensky is also saying it in this way. He says that um, unfortunately there's no time, there was no timely and large-scale response to the attack on the hydroelectric plant, meaning he's asking the world, essentially, what, what he's, his veiled request here. It appears he's asking the world to give a large-scale and timely response to Russia ahead of this attack, because he's drawing equivalence to the hydroelectric electric power plant attack. And he's saying that they've done it before, they'll do it again, and the world needs to get behind us and react in a timely and very large-scale way. He says this may incite the Kremlin to commit new evil, the idea that if the world does not respond. And he's saying it's the responsibility of everyone in the world to stop it. No one can stand aside as radiation affects everyone. It's true that if they were to destroy the power plant either side, uh, you would have essentially very likely the scenario that was warned about with Chernobyl, what Chernobyl almost was where had the reactor been allowed to melt down fully, uh, it would have created a nuclear disaster throughout Western Europe. And he is saying that in order to avoid nuclear disaster, essentially Western Europe, and probably the United States, have to get behind what he's calling a large-scale uh, preemptive, it appears, response. That's what he's suggesting here. Uh, the problem with this is that I don't think anyone believes either side at this point. Uh, but let me show you Zelensky's statements, and then I'll, I'll go further into some of my analysis, and I'll show you the different arguments on it. Let me play this briefly. I'll just play a short clip because he's speaking Ukrainian, but you can you can read the subtitles. I'll, I'll play a short clip for y'all. Свід бачить, до яких сценаріїв готуються терористи, і світ готовий реагувати. Радіація це загроза для всіх, для всіх у світі. Атомна станція повинна бути повністю. Anyways, um, it's, it's, it's over a five-minute video. You can watch it if you would like. It's on Vladimir Zelensky's Twitter page. He's saying that Russia is planning to destroy this nuclear power plant again while making it appear that it had been bombed. Russia, as far as I understand, is currently in control of that plant, uh, meaning that it is on their soil. They are taking precautions already as if they're expecting an attack on it. And again, believe whichever side, whichever side you will. Let me show you briefly some of the history on this because you might remember last year, actually, there were concerns about that power plant. And there were concerns that fighting around that plant would result in a nuclear disaster. Uh, here is CNN in August of 2022, for example. And it says, United Nations Secretary General Guterres described our recent artillery and rocket fire around the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in central Ukraine as suicidal, further adding to fears of an, incident, an accident at the plant, which is the largest of its kind in Europe. Largest nuclear power plant in Europe. And he said, quote, Any attack on nuclear power plants is a suicidal thing. I hope these attacks will end. And he said this and called on the International Atomic Energy Agency to be given access to the plant. Uh, recent, more recently, in May of 2023, uh, you can see ABC News reported that Russia had ordered evacuations of citizens around the Zaporizhia power plant in Ukraine amid warnings of a severe nuclear accident. 
and that was amid concerns that fighting around it would result in a nuclear disaster. Again, this, this, is, this would be bigger than Chernobyl, uh, frankly. That being said, both sides claim the other is planning this attack. Let me show you what Russia is saying, and then we'll go deeper into this as well. Here you have a tweet describing the, situ the situation, and it says this. Russian and Ukrainian sources are continuing to claim that some kind of provocation at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is going to occur sometime in the next 24 to 48 hours. This was yesterday, so they're saying possibly today. With Ukrainian officials stating that Russian forces have placed explosives in three of the six power units with new devices having been observed on the roof of the cooling unit. Russian sources are also now stating that Ukrainian forces are carrying out an operation on operations on the plant tonight utilizing high precision missiles and kamikaze attack drones. Um, before we, I'll go deeper into this because there's some more I want to talk about. Before I go into that, I can tell you something very bizarre, is that there were rumors, so th this only began taking place, interestingly, on July 4th, yesterday, and uh, something very strange happened, and I know this because, you know, I, I tend to have my thumb on the pulse of the news. Last week, there were people claiming to be insiders who were leaking information online claiming that this would happen. And, you know, normally when I see insiders claiming something major, the big, the big you know, two more weeks type happening, I, te I tend to view it with skepticism, but I don't, I don't totally write it off, of course. I, I, tend, I tend to not have that mentality where I think something is immediately true or false. I tend to let it reside as is, <laughs> let, let it abide. And, you know, I, I tend to regard it as a possibility. I, I don't regard, I don't accept or disregard things offhand. It's just the way I am. Uh, but I can tell you something very strange. Last week, there were insiders posting online, and these posts were circulating on the internet. I, if I remember right, they posted it on the quote-unquote dark web, which is not really the dark web. Uh, I think they posted it on 4chan, in fact. Uh, and it was circulating from there. Basically, what happened was an insider claimed he was with the U.S. government, I believe the, the U.S. military. This was last week again. The, in, the insider claimed that, the alleged insider, but at this point I think it's probably accurate because it proved to be true. The insider claimed that they had intelligence that Russia was planning to attack the nuclear facility. The insider was alleging that the United States was planning an attack in kind uh, and that this could result in nuclear war. He was saying that America was planning retaliatory nuclear attacks, and that was the allegation. The individual also claimed that members of our armed forces, the U.S. military, had been given um, you know, medication that helps with radiation sickness, I can't remember the name of it at this point, uh, and that they, they were also being given bonuses, I believe, of $10,000 in order to buy supplies that they may need in order to shelter in place and so on. Believe what you will on this, but what is interesting to me is that last week there were insiders claiming this intelligence existed. This week the intelligence comes out. That being said, just because someone leaks something on the internet doesn't mean it's automatically true once it comes to pass. Because the reality is both sides, Ukraine and Russia, are claiming the other side is planning the attack. Meaning that one side is lying, and it's not clear which side is lying. But if one side is lying, it would be in the interest of that one side to post disinformation on the internet to frame the narrative of what was going to happen. Meaning, even if a leak takes place online, again, it's an information operation. One side is lying, and it's not clear which side is lying. Either Ukraine is lying or Russia is lying. It's not clear yet. But that means the other side, one of them, is in fact launching a disinformation campaign. And you could expect that as part of that, they would make online posts claiming this and framing the narrative ahead of time. Uh, just making my point on why you can't immediately believe such things. That being said, uh, I'll go deeper into this, but for the rest of this episode, let's jump over to Epoch TV. So I will see you on Epoch TV and join us over there. Link in the description below if you're on YouTube. Join us on Epoch TV. Again, we're on a few platforms. Uh, and I'll continue on what's happening right now. I'll show you some of the different quotes coming out. And folks, thank you for being here. So I'll go into, I'm going to focus on this today, then we'll go into questions in a moment. But um, let me show you.